Hello everyone and welcome to this the second session in a series of sessions, online sessions uh, and recordings about the research project process. In this session we'll be looking at the research proposal. In any unit at Pearson that you'll be studying you'll notice in the coursework you have to submit a research project proposal. A research project proposal is an outline of the research you intend to carry out so it's a kind of a mini specification it's a mini um, a mini little um, outline of what you're going to do how you're going to do it when you're going to do it and why it's important in today's session we'll be looking at giving you some advice of the structure of a general research project proposal okay and advice on the content of the individual bits within a research project proposal so it's quite important because actually you'll be having to submit a research project proposal as part of your research project unit that you're studying whichever level you're at, you're at at Pearson you have to submit this project proposal and it will be marked usually the marks attributed to this are, are, are lower marks because it's your first try but actually if you do your research project proposal really well it sets you up to do a really good project because things like literature reviews, things like methodology, things like objectives all have to be put into the research project proposal. If you get those right now in the research project proposal it makes the big project, the bigger piece of work later on much easier. In terms of the structure of a research project proposal there's, there's generally seven, seven major sections that you need to think about. The first one is the research title. What's going to be the title of UC? It's how you know what what you're calling it. The second bit is the background. Now, the background is divided into two. The first bit is an outline of the practical problem, opportunity, or issue that you're trying to address as part of your research, and you have to justify why that problem, opportunity, or issue is really important. And again, you need to reference evidence to support that. The second piece to the background is the academic literature which is connected or associated with your topic okay so you've got two bits the practical the professional angle the problem the opportunity that you're looking at but then what's the academic saying about it? what's the theory behind it what's the current research behind it and that's the background section we'll, we'll do more on these individual sections as we go through we then have the research aim uh, and objective section Okay, uh, and we'll go through them as well. We need to set a range of research objectives so we know what we're trying to achieve. We then have a methodology section or a research design section. Sometimes it's just called a method section. The terminology it doesn't matter as long as it's one of those terms you use. In this section, this is where we outline a, a kind of set of instructions of what research methods we're going to use. Are we going to use interviews? Are we going to use questionnaires? Fine how many questionnaires, how many interviews, who are we questioning, when's it going to happen, where's it going to happen, what's the type of questioning, etc, etc. So the method has to be quite detailed. It has to be almost like a set of instructions that someone can actually follow without you being present. Um, the fifth element is ethical issues, if you have any. This isn't a, a kind of compulsory thing, but if you're researching uh, in schools, for example, have you got the consent of, of your of parents or teachers? So, you know, we, we, there just needs to be some care taken if you are researching children or sensitive issues. Um, and then the sixth section, which is a, a major, bit of a major um, uh, section, project management. This is where you have to plan out um, when you're going to do your research, when you're going to do your literature review, when you're going to do your interviews, when you're going to do your questionnaires. So we're talking about Gantt charts here, really. Uh, and then you'll be looking at what kind of resources you might need to help with your research project. And then the final section, obviously, is a Harvard referencing list at the back, just to reference to put all your references together from, from the whole of the proposal. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through in each of these sections individually, and I'm going to give you some advice on how to, to, to go about these sections so you can go off and start putting together your research proposal on your topic that you want to go for. So the first section, the research project title. So this is, this is like a title to a book. You've got to put a title that's attractive, uh, it's concise, it, it, it does what it says on the tin, it's quite detailed, it's self-explanatory uh, and it's quite catching attention. So 
you know, some people just spend minutes on this, but actually spend a bit of time on this, thinking, you know, what am I, go what, how am I going to term this project? What's the actual title of the project? So, you know, keep them simple, no more than a sentence. You know, don't make them overly, overly bearing, overly too long. So here we've got some, uh, some. Um, titles the first one is actually from my PhD so modeling and measuring dynamic capabilities well that's what I was doing I was modeling and I was measuring dynamic capabilities fine if anyone wants to find my work and they type in dynamic capabilities as what they're interested in they clearly know what that's about other titles from other disciplines uh, household robotics uh, you know uh, devices for vacuuming and and uh, lawn mowing so they're studying you know the benefits and what they're doing uh, a garden, gardens and gardening in a fast changing urban environment Manchester 1790 to 1850 again it says what it does on the tin it's fairly self explanatory but it may take you some time just to make it concise and, and says what it does now if you struggle to get your research project down into one kind of sentence or a title it may mean that your research project hasn't got enough focus uh, and it's too wide wider scope so just be careful that that is a that is a an obvious um, uh, kind of telltale sign that it should your project is too big uh, and too has a too wider too wider scope if you can't get you don't think you can get it down into a uh, a title such as these in a, in a in a very short sentence so what i want you to do now um just pause the recording for five to ten minutes and start drafting out your your research project title hopefully by now that you've all had uh, some time to think about your research projects and what you would like to do but now what would you call it if, if it was an actual book what would you call it uh, be creative but make sure it says what it does on the tin it's got to say it's got to be self-explanatory that's really important so draft it out spend it a time pause the recording and when you're ready then we'll move on to the, to the next bit okay Right, moving on to the second section. So this is the background section. Now remember that I said that the background is divided into two. The first element is the practical problem, opportunity or issue that you're going to tackle. That's the business related problem. And then the second bit is the academic research or theory that's behind the scenes that's connected or associated with your research problem. So two different angles, okay? The first one is basically what's happening now in, in business or with consumers, the live issue, the live opportunity, you know, the live problem. What have the academics said in the past about this topic? Is it if, if, if it was branding at Skoda and you're looking at an opportunity to develop the brand or rebrand Skoda, whatever it may be? What do the academics talk about branding? What's the theory behind branding? What's the current research about, about branding? Is there any current research about branding of car companies? So you're looking, you, you, it's a dual approach here. So make sure you have these two kind of sections in the background. First of all, a good definition of the problem, opportunity and issue. And then you need to look at the associated literature or research, current research behind the scenes. When we talk about the practical problem, opportunity or issue, you need to be careful okay some problems are quite complex some issues and opportunities are quite complex so you may have to spend a little bit of time trying to define that quite concisely and to be very clear on what your problem is now that will take you quite a bit of time to to look at it needs to be clear and you've probably maybe heard me talk about something called the mum test well the mum test is you know if you if you give um, your work that you've written to your mum, and your mum understands it, and and you you know um, your mum ha hasn't got a degree, or your your mum's just you know helps you at home and raised you. Uh, this is what my mum did. You know she didn't go to university, but if I wrote it in a way that my mum understood it, I knew it was right. So uh, it didn't have to be mum; it could be a friend, it could be dad, whatever. As long as they can understand what it means and what they mean. if they don't understand what it means, you've got to go back to it and redraft it. So. Trying to cons trying to to cl to be clear what your problem opportunity or issue is is really important, and and that's a that's a writing skill. So you need to be you need to be really important there. So once you've got a clear definition of what the problem is and where it's happening, the next bit is you've got to justify why that research into this problem opportunity issue is really important. This justification is really important in any research project. 
One of the skills in the research project is about creating and demonstrating arguments. Okay, One of the most important skills that you will learn, hopefully, from putting together a research project, your own project, this isn't my project, this isn't your tutor's project, this is your project that you're going to start, conceive, put together, implement, and then complete and finalize. So from start to finish, this is completely yours. So, you know, choose something that you enjoy. But a good research project, there's no right or wrong on whatever your research project is at all. No one will ever say that. But what they will say is that, is it justified? Why are you doing something? Why are you researching small businesses? Tell me, tell the tutor why they're research, researching small businesses is important. Is it because small businesses account for over 50% of the economy? So, you know, you, you've got to be able to provide evidence that justifies why this research is important. Is it because if we don't do the research, we don't look at this opportunity, potentially the company could be forced into making people redundant? How many people are redundant? Of course, that has an impact on the state because they have to pay unemployment benefits, etc., etc., etc. So, but if you can, when you're justifying, try to reference uh, data or statistics from uh, professional sources, so Mintel, The Economist, the newspapers, you know, try to, the government agencies, government departments like the Department of Trade and Industry, try to reference that kind of material rather than the academic material because you'll, you'll be coming to that in the second part of the, of the lecture, uh, of, the, of, the, of the section, of the background section. So justification is really, really important. Referencing your evidence to support your arguments is really important. And try to keep those references to professional-based references. So government agencies, um, uh, publications like The Economist, Mintel, those kind of professional things, trade journals, but r rather than academic journals, because that's the next section. So again, we just need to pause for a few minutes so you can think about this and do some brainstorming. Uh, and I, what I want you to, and I hope that you've all probably got an idea of what your research project is about and what it's going to be about. But maybe the next step you need to look at is actually, I need to work out how am I going to justify it? How am I going to argue that this research problem, this research problem, opportunity, or issue that I'm going to look at is actually going to be, uh, going to be going to be justified and, and actually you know worthy of doing. So I want to spend some time brain, brainstorming the kind of points that you would make, the argument that you'd make to justify your research project. I don't expect you to be referencing at the minute, but think about the kind of sources you would look for data to help you justify. Five to ten minutes, pause the recording, when you've done and you've got some notes down, great, you've started the work, fantastic, and then we'll move on. Right, moving on. Now remember that I said that the background is divided into two bits. First of all, the problem, the opportunity, the issue that we need to define and justify. And the second one is the academic research or literature that's associated or related to your topic. Now, for some of you, that would be that would be really easy to identify. So if, I, if you're doing a topic on branding, obviously you need to look at the branding theory. Some of you might be much harder and you have to think about what's the theories behind the scenes that actually underpin the topic. So um, you might be doing research online, you might be doing some kind of looking at TripAdvisor and stuff like that. Well, there might not be lots of academic research about TripAdvisor. However, there will be lots of academic research about buy behavior. So you have to kind of think a bit out of the box, what theories will be linked and what type of research will be linked to your topic. Because if you're choosing a very new topic, that's fantastic, don't get me wrong. Very new topics are great because it's something that no one else has been researching and that's that's one of the, one of the important things about research is you choose something that no one else has researched. If you choose something that someone else has researched, there's no point doing the research. You just wouldn't get through. Um, so choosing something is great, but be bear in mind that the literature, you might have a harder time of working out what the literature may be. So you have to think out of the box and think, right, what theories could be connected? And again, this is a brainstorming exercise where you, you, you think about the theories you, you, need to, you need to look at for your literature review. With a literature review, obviously you're looking at all the theories that's connected with your topic. You have to say why these theories are connected if, if there isn't a clear link. But one of the most important skills in a literature review is actually being critical. 
A literature review is talked about in the textbooks about being a critical review of the literature. Okay. Now, what it means by being critical, it means by looking at the disadvantages of the theory that already exists or disadvantages with the existing re Moving on, on to the second part of the background, and remember that the background is divided into two bits. The first bit that we've looked at already is the def trying to define and justify the problem, the practical problem, the opportunity or issue that we are attempting to address as part of the research. And of course we're justifying that by giving reasons why that problem, opportunity or issue is really important and also referencing material from the professional literature, Mintel, Economist, Times, Financial Times, that kind of documentation to help us justify why that project's important. The second part of the background is called the, uh, the literature review. Now this is looking at behind the scenes. Now we've got academic literature, uh, academic research, academic theories, all for every subject that we've got ever in, in, in the world. Um, for your topic, for your research problem opportunity issue, you need to think about what are the theories that are connected or associated with my research topic. Okay, um, now that can be easy for some people. If you've chosen a branding topic, fine, not a problem. You, there's theories about branding, but some topics are much more, much newer, much more contemporary. Research topics on TripAdvisor, for example, might not have a lot of uh, academic writings and theories out there about it. However, you have to think out of the box a little bit and think, well, what theories are there that could be connected to my topic? Um, when you talk about TripAdvisor, that's obviously a consumer by behavior type process. People are using um, feedback to, to try and make a judgment on what they're going to buy or where they're going to stay uh, or where they're going to eat. So, you know, that's the kind of the kind of theory you would look at the by behavior process so you have to think a bit more out of the box um, now when they talk about a literature review what it means is we have to go into uh, a fair amount of detail on quite a bit of re a bit of academic research and theories behind your topic so one of the kind of tick boxes that you need to look at for a literature review is having a wide range of theory that is associated with your topic but also the next level up is not just having lots of theories and having to show that you are almost fairly well expert in this topic because that's what you're trying to do as a research project. Um, you also have to have a critical review. Now what it means by having a critical review is that you're looking at the disadvantages with the current theories or current research in your area. And the reason we do that is because a literature the point of it is to look at the existing research and existing theories connected to your problem, opportunity or issue. If those theories or if that research can actually answer your research question or your research problem or your research opportunity or your research issue, there's no point doing the research because it's reinventing the wheel. So we have to look at theories and we have to look, take a critical eye and say, well, yes, this theory is good in this part, but this bit doesn't, is not appropriate to the company that I'm looking at or it's not appropriate to the industry I'm looking at or it's not appropriate to the type of consumers I'm looking at because, because, because. So we need to we need to look at when you're reading and you're trying to get a good level of depth and you're having a good range of literature and theory that you're looking at because that's one of the biggest one of the big things to start with to show that you're really expert in the theories and the research behind your topic you need to have a critical eye what's the problem with your topic why does those theories or that current research help you answer um, help you answer your research problem your research opportunity your research issue now it, I would advise you to try and keep within the academic journal paper. So you need to be need to be using Google Scholar. So go onto Google, go onto the other tab at the top, find Google Scholar, and type in keywords that you think are associated theories to your topic, and you'll start finding journal papers, and then you can go and get them through Pearson College. Um, EBSCO is a database that you can use through Pearson's OLE. You can search that. So journal papers are, are great because they are much more contemporary, they're much more they're much newer research where the textbooks the textbooks are okay and if you're at level four and you're at level five, they're okay, but actually what you want to be doing to get the really high marks is start looking at the journal papers. Because that's where the much more in-depth research is, the much more in-depth theories, and that's where you'll find papers that are closely 
more more closely associated with your research topic. So, you know, that's that's the skill there. And of course, what you want to show the examiner is that you're an expert. You understand all the theories behind this stuff, uh, and you understand a wide range of theories. But you understand also the disadvantage of these current theories. So when you're trying to be critical of this research that you're reading, try to outline why it's not going to solve your problem, opportunity or, or issue that you're, you're trying to look at um, and say why it's not appropriate anymore. Is it because is the research not appropriate because it was conducted in the fashion industry? Well, actually, you're researching the food industry. Um, is the research inappropriate because they only looked at two, they did interviews with two banks? Well, you're actually looking at four banks. So, you know, you, you, you can actually, you can actually criticize these things but by, by, by taking a very critical eye and thinking what is it appropriate does it fit does it help me answer my question my opportunity my uh, issue if it doesn't say why and try to back that up with some form of referencing to say well no this isn't because X and Y said these the critical skill is much more a level six skill so level four level five what you need to be doing is thinking about getting getting just getting a lot of research a lot of data a lot of theories down that's the big tick box for you level six you've got to be critical so you know if you can get critical being critical in level four and five great fantastic um, so just bear that in mind um, <laughs> When you're talking about being critical, yeah, question whether the theory can help you solve your problem or not, and if it can't, say why. But also, some theories might be really useful in helping you. So don't be afraid to say, well, this is useful because it seems to fit this, that, and the other. So don't be afraid of that. But, you know, just for the start, to get started with, you need to make sure you start reading, reading, and reading to get all these theories that are associated with your work together. So what I want you to do now, just again, pause the recording and spend five to ten minutes brainstorming keywords. Now, what I mean by keywords is keywords that you would use to find theories that are associated with your research. So if I'm doing a, 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 a research topic on suggestive selling, that's the term I would use. If I'm doing a, a research topic on TripAdvisor, maybe it's going to be consumer consumer feedback or it might be it might be uh, buyer behavior online. I need to work out the keywords I'm going to use to search the databases, the EBSCO database, the Google Scholar database to find my journal papers. So that takes a task because some of you will be really easy. You're doing sales, you're doing you're doing you're doing international expansion, you're doing ethics, whatever you're doing. But some of you are much more difficult and you have to think about the keywords and you're gonna to have to try all sorts of different keywords to define the papers that are going to be more more interesting and more relevant to your topic. So spend five or so minutes drafting those keywords uh, pause the recording and then you can use those keywords to go and do your searching later. Moving on onto the next major section, this is the research aim and objectives. And we've kind of looked at these uh, a little bit in the past, but I need to just, you need to get these into your research proposal. So after you've done your background, which consists of, consists of the definition of your problem, the opportunity, the issue, and justification for that, and then an academic literature section, okay, uh, where you're criticizing and looking at a range of, of literature and past research and theories that are associated with your research. The next one is to really put your research aim down. So remember, remember that the A, the research aim is a sentence or two that outlines the direction of your research. Where's it going? What's it about? You know, and it, this is this is this. You may think that's easy, just a sentence or two, but you've got to get maybe quite complex projects down into a sentence or two to say to anyone. And again, it's got to be fairly simple and clear and concise what your research topic's about. If people don't understand what your research topic's about by you know, by reading your research aim, then we've got a problem. So we, you need to test it again on your friends, on your mom, or whatever it is. So here we've got an example, an investigation to the way in which social media is transforming how customers demand more from businesses. Particular uh, focus will be will be will, will be placed upon changing expectations for customers and how these may push the business into new ways of working. Relatively straightforward, not laden with terminology. You know, it's it's fairly straightforward. So, so that would be that would be something that would be quite good. A sentence or two. That's all. Once you've done uh, your research aim, then we move on to our objectives. But before we do that, spend pause the recording again. 
Spend five or ten minutes just drafting out your research aim. Hopefully by now you'll have a good idea of what your research project's about. Um, now just spend t five or ten minutes drafting out a sentence or two of what your research aim could be. Leave that to one side and listen to the rest of the recording and then test that research aim that you've written down on a friend and see if they understand it and make sure they it's quite clear. If it's not, redraft it. So spend five minutes or so, five, ten minutes, just drafting out a research aim that you can test on someone else. And we'll move on. Okay, once you've done your research aim, we then move on to our objectives. Okay, now research objectives and um, these are basically uh, providing the detail what actually you're going to do and there's a, a, a fairly straightforward format to this now this is what catches people out because this is advice that I that, that's being given and you people follow it and that's fine no problem uh, but then people just ignore it or they don't even listen to this recording and of course they give research objectives which are completely bizarre so it obviously you, you're losing marks left right and center so uh, so try to stick to this format if you can for research objectives what you're trying to do is it they're tasks basically they're tasks that you're going to complete and tick off as you're doing your research research project there tends to be four or five. If you're at level six, a final year of your degree, then five is going to be what you're going to look at. If you're at level four or level five, first and second year of your degree, then four is going to be fine. There's a certain format to these. The first objective always links to the review of the literature. Okay, that's one of your major tasks. One of the major things in any research project is going uh, over the journal papers, going over the textbooks, and finding research and finding theories that are related to your topic and going over them to make sure that your topic can't be answered by the current research and by the current literature. Okay, so that's one of the first major tasks, and that's always your first objective. The last objective tends to be an objective that talks about discussing the implications and making recommendations to various parties or various stakeholders and I'll give you some examples of these in the next slide and then the middle ones are actually the objectives that you're going to do to do your research I'm going to survey certain consumers in a certain store or whatever it is and I'll show you an example here so here we are here's a set of objectives we've got four research objectives here the first one remember I said is to review the literature in the area that you're focusing on. So here we've got, as an example, to critically review the literature concerning dynamic capabilities and business agility. Fine. If you're doing uh, a topic on suggestive selling, it would be to critically review the literature on suggestive selling, suggestive selling and sales techniques. Fine. Okay. Look at the last one now. Okay. Remember the last one is always the objective that is talking about making, discussing the implications of the research and making recommendations. Here. To discuss the implications of customer expectations and make recommendations to government, business and academia. Again, use these formats. Don't be afraid to use these formats, but you're going to have to change them because you might be making recommendations to a certain company or you might be making recommendations to a, a, a professional body, you know, mar or, or marketeers, marketing managers. You might be making recommendations to a board of directors at Skoda, whatever you're doing. Okay. But the, re the research, pro that you must be able to adapt them. But always think, first one, it needs to be critically review literature, whatever that literature is. The last one needs to be discussing the implications with the research, okay, and making recommendations for various stakeholders, okay. There will always be various stakeholders. And when it talk about, talks about making recommendations for academia, that would mean where could the research go next? What's the next level of research? Where would you want the research to go? Because you maybe you found something out interesting and you think actually the research could go in, in a certain way. So the last one, make recommendations for various parties. The first one, critically review the literature. Now, let's come to the middle ones. The middle ones are your, your actual research tasks. These are, your, these are the things you're actually going to do. So here we've got to identify how customer expectations are influencing business practices. Well, to achieve that objective, to identify customer expectations, I'm probably going to have to interview some customers. How am I going to see if it's changing business practices? I'm probably going to have to interview some managers in uh, a business. Fine. Okay. My research methodology will tell me how I'm going to achieve that objective, okay? But first of all, we need to set the objective. The next one. 
to investigate the, expe the expectations of customers in, a, in this dynamic environment. I don't know which dynamic environment, but it will be a dynamic environment to discuss the expect to investigate the expectation of customers. Again, I'm looking at questioning customers what their expectations are in a certain situation. So again, that could be an interview. It could be a focus group. Okay. So these middle two questions we've got here, they're the ones that we go we we bring forward into our methodology, and we have to say for this objective, objective two, which is to identify how custom customer expectations are influencing business practices, we are going to do this type of research. We're going to do these interviews with these types of people in this situation. And the interview will have these types of questions. So the middle questions, the objectives here, this is where you're going to have to say, these are the research methods I'm going to use to try and to achieve them. Okay, the other two, the literature, you don't need to do anything in your methodology, and the last one, you don't need to do anything. That's the kind of top and tailing of the objectives. Fine, okay, now you understand a little bit about objectives. Pause the recording, spend five to ten minutes putting together a set of draft objectives. Again, they don't need to be perfect, but I want you to start thinking about and drafting them up so you've got something to start working on. Again, remember, if you're at level six, you probably want five objectives. OK, so it'd be three research objectives, which is the middle objectives. OK, and if you're at level uh, level four, which is the first year and the second and the second year of your degree, you probably want somewhere around four objectives. OK, um, so two two research objectives in the middle. OK, so pause the recording, spend five minutes or so now and, and see how you get on. Right, moving on. The next major section is about the research, the proposed method or research design. Remember that I said that when you're doing your research objectives, there's two, the middle objectives, and in this slide here, the two middle ones are your research objectives. This is where you have to propose a methodology or research methods to achieve them. Okay, you don't need to worry about one and four, but the middle ones you do. In your research method, what you need to do is describe uh, a set of methods or um, how you're going to research. Are you going to use interviews? Are you going to use surveys? Are you going to use things like observation? Whatever you're going to use, you need to describe them as a set of instructions. And you also need to say, which objective am I going to use this research method for? OK, so you need to be able to link up your research methods with your, your, your research objectives which again, remember, are those middle objectives, not the literature review and not the implication or recommendation objectives at the top and the bottom. They must be the middle objectives. So it needs to be detailed. One of the things with the research method, it needs to be detailed. Okay, It needs to be like a set of instructions, basically. So if you gave this, this, this research proposal to someone else, they could clearly understand what it's about, and they could also clearly go and uh, enact your um, uh, research methods, because there's a set of instructions there. So detailed uh, detail is important. Are you using interview? Who are you going to interview? When are you going to do it? What kind of questions are you going to answer? Uh, uh, ask them. Okay. That detailed description is great, but also the next level of marks is the is the justification. Why am I going to use an interview? Why am I going to use observation? Why am I using action research? Why am I using questionnaires? You've got to justify why you're going to use that method. Okay, why is that method the best method to achieve your objective? Okay, and that's the key there. That's the the key. You know, and you could be looking at the advantages of that method against other methods, or you could be discussing quite concisely and clearly why other methods are appropriate because they have they have weaknesses and again don't be afraid to reference these weaknesses these disadvantages to help you argue that interviewing actually is the best way to meet this objective those that you are more advanced will think actually I'm working in a certain company um, Questionnaires uh, are going to be the best way because they have an online system. They can distribute the questionnaires quite simply to all staff. All staff will have to answer the question if they want to log into their PC and stuff like that. So there may be justification you can use that is linked to the context. And that's what we call context-specific justification. So we're not taking you know, references from the textbook to help us say, well, the advantages of, of, of interviewing is great. But actually, we're saying 
where I'm researching in ASDA, they've got this system, and this system lends itself great to sending out lots of questionnaires to lots of people, and they have to fill it in because they can't log into the system in the morning unless they do fill it in. So there could be things within the context, wherever you're researching, that actually suggest that this is probably a better way of researching this kind of, this kind of problem, opportunity or issue. So that's important. Detailed description of, of, of the method you're using and then a justification for why okay, you're doing it. So when I say detailed description, how many interviews, how many questionnaires, or whatever it is. Um, and remember to link, the, your, link your research activities, whatever you're doing, to those research objectives, those middle objectives. So it's clear that for this objective two, I'm doing this. For objective three, I'm doing this. You don't need to do that for objective one because objective one is a critical review of the literature. That's a given in any research project. And the last one you don't need to do it for because that's a given. Making recommendations is also a given in any research project. That's why we're doing the project. There's some things you should also consider for your research method section. That is, you need to describe the what you're going to do in terms of your methods, interview, survey, etc. Then you have to talk about very briefly about how you're collecting the data, and this is about recording the data. So, um, you know, an interview, for example, are you recording on a dictaphone? Um, you know, uh, or if you're looking at doing some observational research where you're watching consumers, how are you recording it? Is it video? Is it is it by making notes in a journal? So again. You need to re need to read if you cho choose think interviews are best. You need to read forward a little bit in the textbook to make sure that you know how to record an interview, and that's the best way to do that. So you can re you can write this in and reference it into your research proposal. The other one that I want you to focus on a little bit, and not too much because it's a bit advanced at this stage, but is data analysis. Now, with data analysis, this is going to be this is this really sets the kind of first class students away from the the kind of the, the, the kind of two two to one two two students. This is where we talk about data analysis. This is where it gets quite complex. This is where, and we'll do this later on. But for the research proposal, those that want to really score really highly will have to re read forward into, and that's obviously one of the big tests here, into what data analysis is about. Basically, if you're doing interviews. Go and read about how to analyze an interview and you need to have three or four sentences in your research paper about what you're going to do to analyze it not a major thing here the research method and the data collection are the most important but if you can move forward and think about reading about how you're going to analyze the data you have become a very rounded and a very very good individual that is is, is showing that you're clearly independent in the work you're doing so because you're going you're going forward and looking quite quite acutely at your research methods and what you're going to do with the data once you collect it so try to think about research method how you're going to do it what's the when you're going to do it what's it all about and why you're going to do it how you're collecting the data, how it's going to be recorded, and then some information about how you're going to analyze the data. SPSS is a software package which is talks looks at analyzing statistical data. So if you're collecting numbers uh, and figures, for example, you can actually look at that sales data or profits data. You can you can analyze that by looking at the mean, the mode. There's all sorts of regression and coloration type tasks. It is a little bit advanced this level, so please don't worry. We will do a little bit later. But at this level, I would read for, pick your research methods, say why they're important. That's the core of this assessment. And then you can read forward a bit to look at how you can analyze it. But we'll do some of that later as well. So again, pause your pause the recording to five to ten minutes and, and think about the research methods that you think would be really useful and are achievable. That's important. They must be achievable. You know, there's no point trying to re uh, trying to interview the chief executive of ICI. It's just not going to happen. Um, you know, middle to lower managers, yes, maybe. If you've got access, you've got contacts there. Remember about a research project you must be achievable don't bite off too much than you can chew keep it keep it simple keep it straightforward and keep it nicely focused and actually keep it within the realms of what is achievable for you okay you all by now hopefully in in your degree understand some of your weaknesses and some of your strengths here you can actually you can actually avoid you know if you don't like doing interviews that's not something you want to do we'll do it a different way but remember, it must match your research objectives. Write your research objectives so they fit your research method. It's complete your project, 
completely. Um, but it must be it must be uh, like a story. It must all fit together like a jigsaw. Um, where the where where people lose marks is that the literature review and the methodology and the research objectives just don't fit together. They're just they're just um, you know they're just they're, there's just two separate bits and there's no synergy to the different sections. It just didn't work. So you need to be careful of that. So pause the recording, spend five to ten minutes thinking about the research methods. What would be you could do you could do that are achievable in where you want to research and think why they are probably the best research methods to 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 what's the argument for why they're the best research methods. Moving on into the, the into the, the, the latter bits of the uh, proposal. Uh, and just one point, if you are thinking about divide, if you have a word limit for your research project, then you need, or, or a page limit maybe, uh, and again you have to refer back to your coursework brief to understand what the limits are on your individual uh, unit for your research proposal. But um, remember that the big sections are your literature review and your background, where, where you describe the, the opportunity, the problem, the issue, and you justify that, and then your literature review, that's a big section. And your methodology is also one of the major sections. Things like the objectives, uh, things like the, the project management section here are the minor sections. So the words should be spread quite heavily on the background okay, and the methodology. They're the two major sections. When you come to the project management section, okay, this is really straightforward. All you need to do is plan out how and when you're going to do this project, okay? And it's timing, okay? It's all about timing. So we're talking about having a Gantt chart, which we look here. Here's an example, you know. Um, and and if you want, you can plan in other bits of coursework. You know, some of you will be doing this, uh, and you'll be really busy. We'll plan it out. Be realistic. It's no point doing a plan that's not realistic. You're not going to stick to. Use this as a tool to help you, um, because otherwise it's just pointless doing it. So a Gantt chart, you know, really really useful. Define all the activities down the bottom. Uh, in the months and the weeks across the top, when you're going to do things, and try and stick to it, because then you'll be on time. The worst thing. For, for any student, and it can be quite stressful, is if you rush this and leave this to the last minute. Because if you leave it to the last minute, trying to do you know a research project within two weeks is just horrific. Uh, and, and, and it's clearly seen by an examiner, uh, and it falls all apart, and, and the marks aren't going to be good. So you can clearly see, hopefully, through these recordings, that there needs to be clear thought of how the sections all link together. There needs to be clear thought about the project, about the, the research in terms of the literature, and also the methodology. So, And, and the people that do the, the best here, the people that start early and do a little bit often, and that's the key to, to doing this. And, and this kind of Gantt chart shows that. Uh, and if you look at this, you can actually see that, you know, read literature is quite a long time. And, and I did say that the literature is actually one of the big parts you need to do is reading all those theories. You've got to become an expert in this topic. So if you are questioned on it, you can stand up and say, yeah, well, I know about that. And this is what this is about. But the problems with it are this. So, you know, that's that's really important that you, you, you really embed yourself and come emerged in the topic that you've chosen. And that's why I say you must choose a topic that you're really interested in. Otherwise, this becomes a, a, a horrific project. Do a Gantt chart, but also think about the resources that you need. Do you need a dictaphone? Do you need um, some some kind of? Uh, do you need um, SPSS to to analyse your data? Um, what do you need? You know, is there any resources? There shouldn't be too many resources that you need, but you, if you're doing interviews, you need to record them. You know, if you need a, you want to do questionnaires through SurveyMonkey, then you you need to register a SurveyMonkey and use SurveyMonkey and all that kind of stuff. So you know, don't be afraid to do that. The other one you should be looking at here is any risks. Uh, could there be anything happen? What if the people you want to interview, you can't get to interview them? Who else are you going to interview? What's the backup plan? So some kind of contingency planning is, is important here. So be a bit self-critical. Um, you know, what are the risks that you, you need, to, need to consider? So again, uh, pause the recording for a little bit if you want to. Uh, spend five to ten minutes planning out time scales, resources, potential problems. Uh, and then you can move on, but it just you know just sketch out a few bullet points and stuff just to get you going, so you have literally done a little bit for your research project already. So pause now if you want to. If not, wait for a moment, and we'll, we'll move on.
Right. The next section is the uh, ethical issues. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this shouldn't be a major section at all. It only really comes into play if you, ha you have a topic that's quite sensitive. So we're researching children. Maybe we're researching uh, in hospitals where there's patients. Maybe we're, we're observing consumers and they don't know we're observing them. You know, um, and, you know, if you are doing observation research, you know, maybe you should be telling them, you know, have signs up saying that, you know, this thing is you are being recorded. It's for the purposes of research, etc., etc. You know, that, so it's mitigation. So letting people know that, that, that it's happening. Uh, if it's a school project, you know, some people look at educational type projects, then not many people, but then again, it's sensitive if children need to inform parents. So it can get quite complicated. Um, you know, 99.9% .9 of you listening to this won't have any problems. They're business topics, you know, um, there's there's no problem, usually no problems. So don't worry too much about this. But if you do think you have ethical issues, then write them down. Uh, and then you can put this, you can say, well, how are you going to overcome it? Are you going to warp, you know, warn them or email them or whatever? You know, are you going to send a letter to the parent? What are you going to do? What's the way you're going to get around any ethical problems that you may have? So, but again, like I say, there won't be, I shouldn't think that 99% um, of you won't have anything. If you want to now spend five minutes just thinking about if there is any ethical issues, um, fine. If not, wait a few seconds, then we'll we'll move on. And the last and final section you'll be pleased to know is the uh, references section. Okay, and of course you just have a, a list of references uh, at the back of your proposal. This is generally not included in the word count, by the way. If you have a word count for your research proposal, I advise you to read your individual unit, the unit that you're on, because people are listening to this are on all sorts of different research project units at Pearson. Read your course rate brief and, brief and look at the limits that you've got, okay? Nine times out of ten, the uh, references are included in the word count. Okay, um, but you all should by now know the Harvard Reference System. If you don't, or if you're worried about it, just search Harvard Referencing System online. There is some great documents out there available from a lot of universities. Pearson have their own for the OLE as well. There's also a recording that you can listen to. But the sooner you get to grips with the Harvard Referencing System, the better, um, uh, because you know th that's going to help you all the way through your degree. Great, no problem. So you should be all fine now for your for your research proposal. Please go over this as much as you want. What I would say as further advice is, would, uh, in the core textbook that you've been specified for your research pro project, now most of you will on, be on a book by Saunders, uh, Research Methods for Business Students. For this session, if you want to do some more reading, and I advise you to do some more reading, um, then read the section and chapter on research proposals, and it will take you through in, a, in, in, in detail what these what these things are about, so it will help you even more. But generally, uh, the advice they're given here will suit most of you, um, so I hope it's been helpful, and thank you very much for listening.